living with ADHD can be a challenge and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge. We've heard many of you say, but finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life-changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD. Online visits, refills, and a 24-7 care team made for you. In just one minute, Done's online assessment can help kickstart your ADHD treatment journey. With experienced clinicians, worry fill refills, and online visits, you can start getting personalized care as soon as today or tomorrow. So contact an expert team that can help you around the clock and get a personalized treatment plan just for you. Here's how you do it. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, one-click refills, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support with Done for just $79 a month. And pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. Done. Turn ADHD into your strength. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Dateable podcast features real stories from real people of how they make modern dating work or not. Each episode will not only offer you a new perspective on dating, but will also change the way you date. I'm your host, Yue, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear commentary from my producer, Julie Krafchick, and other surprise co-hosts. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating. We've all heard about friends with benefits and the friend zone, <laughs> but I don't think we've ever heard about an eight-year friends with benefit <laughs> relationship before. This I might have be a friend. First. I have a friend. She hasn't been on the podcast though, but we have people on the podcast. Too. Okay. I thought you would be like, I have a friend with benefit. <laughs> it's been I've, been hiding, I've been hiding it from you for eight years. <laughs> way, to play, way to play the long game, guys. So I have a Julie and Andrew here with us in the studio. Julie is 29 years old. She's lived in San Francisco for six years, originally from somewhere really far away, Palo Alto. And Andrew's 28 years old, has also been in San Francisco for six years actually from somewhere far away, Albany, New York, and they're now in a monogamous relationship with each other. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a relationship with benefits now. <laughs> they're here to tell us about their eight year story. They met in college in Boston where they were friends and but also started hooking up. So definitely that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. started eight years ago. <laughs> Moved to San Francisco independently, so not with each other, and continued this off and on hooking up and yes. <laughs> this, uh, this the charades <laughs> and now they've transitioned into a serious relationship over the past year yes. very interesting for all the people who are just hovering <laughs> over their friend yes. just waiting <laughs> waiting for that shoe to drop what Let's start from the very beginning. So you guys met in college. How did the hooking up start? Was was there any intentions of like dating each other? Um, so we met like very close to the end of my senior year. So I would say not really intentions of dating because I was... She was a year above. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we met in a burlesque dance troupe. 
what? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not a great dancer. I'll be the first to admit that. But a lot of my friends choreographed for burlesque at Tufts. And then they recruited a bunch of the rugby boys, enter Andrew, to be in the dances where they wanted like partner dances. What? <laughs> this is the well, best How I Met story ever. It started as like they needed, they needed men to do like lifts and holds and like just mostly be uh, props. They call us like man props. Yeah. But like, like sexy man props that didn't work. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> That is brilliant. <laughs> hey, rugby men. <laughs> hey, you guys have like strong thighs and cores. Yeah. You want to lift and flip some women yeah. on stage? Can we use you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you guys met this way. Was yeah. it like, how'd you get to hook okay, me up? Okay, so, well, it was, the end of, it was the end of the semester, and I was actually like choreographing my first dance with a buddy of mine. Oh, also, you were choreographing? Yeah, you did, yes. Also, also <laughs> named Andrew. And my, my buddy Andrew, he was like, hey. This girl really likes you. She came to practice with all her makeup on. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember this part, but her yes. skin is like extra moisturized. Like extra she, moisturized. She doesn't just do this. Like I didn't know those are things to look for. Yeah. In Boston, okay. you got to extra moisturize. That yeah. is some dry air. But yeah, so we were partners in the dance, and um, I knew at like we had like a little end of the. After the dance, we had this big party, and you would guess the people in burlesque, like, know how to party. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, they, they got, like, very raunchy, so I kind of went into it knowing I wanted to, like, hook up with him. I was very aggressive. My nickname in college was Conquistador. Dang, girl. <laughs> Please elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was kind of like my friends couldn't find me at a party. It was generally because I'd be, like, in the back, with, like, kind of cornering a guy, like, hey. Oh, my God, you're putting the sex <laughs> hand up. No one can see <laughs> yes, that. Man. And she's, like, the corner <laughs> hand up, like, ready to go. Okay. Yeah, it's like when I kind of set my sights to something, it was, like, I really went hard for it. So, okay, so you... This was, like, as you were finishing off college. Mm-hmm. So how did things end? I came back to California. He was actually working in Palo Alto over the summer. I was a summer intern. And you like, guys were, were never boyfriend-girlfriend at no. any point. No. Mm-mm. Got it. Mm-hmm. And she, like, she picked me up from the airport. It was, like, a little bit awkward, I think. Did you just get back with your high school boyfriend or something? The summer before my senior year of college had been, like, kind of dating a guy who we, like, worked together. And then he was in college in California and I was in college in Boston. And we were, like, we're not going to try long distance. That's stupid. We're in college. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I got back, we kind of, like, rekindled things. So Mm -hmm. when Andrew came, I just didn't really say anything to him because I was really awkward in, like, 20. One and I was like, let's just not address it and then just not hook up. And he obviously was like, this is weird, but okay. So had you guys, like, how many times had you hooked up, like, before this? Like, was it, like, a one-time thing or was it, like, multiple? It's like, several weeks. Okay. Yeah. It's, like, probably a month. Got yeah. it. Okay. After college, you made it out here also. Yeah. Was this because of Julie or just totally independent? No, so I, I came back to work for the company I'd worked for the previous summer. Yeah. And then you guys stayed in touch this whole time. Well, when I broke up with the guy that I had been dating, we then kind of started things again. Again. Uh, <laughs> and we're hooking up again. Okay, so basically a year passed, you were still in college, you were with someone else, and mm-hmm. then you regrouped. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> regrouped. Just trying to get out of eight years. Yeah. We, got, we got a lot of years to get through. So, like, yeah. <laughs> so for the next few years, was yeah. it like if you guys weren't in relationships, you hook up or kind of, but we were both in like a bunch of serious relationships in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Do you guys ever think about starting a relationship with each other? No. That's what's kind of funny, is like <laughs> People would ask us that. Like, I remember about two years ago, we were at our friend's birthday party and making out, like, really aggressively in front of everyone because that's, like, what we would do. That's what you do. That's what you would do. (laughs) And they're like, why don't you guys just date? And I was like, why? Like, why would I do that? Like, it was just, like, not a... Not a... Why ruin a good thing, right? There was, like, a... Like, some amount of, like, intimacy lacking where I was like, yeah, well, I have a lot of fun with Julie, but, like, no, we just just don't connect. It's just, like... Interesting. But... like, had you guys met each other's significant others during this time, too? Oh, wait. They're not. Yeah. Yeah. No one gets rid of them. Yeah, so yeah. they're not. So yeah. is that uh, weird? Like, how did they react to that? Ooh. Or did they not know? Uh, or, yeah, would they know? <laughs> I don't think I would tell Maya, so... No. I don't like, benefits. like, lying. I don't want them to, yeah. like, find out about it from That's anyone true. else. Uh, so I would kind of just be like, oh, yeah, we used to hook up, but, like, very casual. We never really dated or anything. So there was a while when we were both in relationships, and we would, like, hang out as couples, like, with our yeah. significant others and, like, other friends and stuff. Interesting. I'm curious, like, how would you guys meet up? Like, would you go on dates? Would you, like, text yeah. each other? Would you just, like... <laughs> Andrew's like, no, yeah, no, like how no. did this like transpire throughout no, all so these years? When I just moved out here, I was like living in like this house in East Palo Alto because that was like the only place with 
like reasonable Boston level rents for me as mm. like a new grad. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we get it. And, <laughs> and like, I feel like I just texted you mm-hmm. and, and like basically Julie would just come over. <laughs> that makes me sound slutty. That's like, how friends with benefits I usually like, work. You're not like hanging, you're not we like dating. We met at like a bar a couple dating, times. Right? Yeah, like, we actually like would hang out. That's the funny thing. And like even when we were friends, we'd go on like friend dates kind of. Like one night I, one of my friends canceled a reservation for, or like couldn't make the reservation to like House of Prime Rib and I was like, who likes me? Ooh, Andrew. Yeah. So we would like go and do these things, like just the two of us sometimes, but like it was... But it know. wasn't dating. I, I do of... feel like that's actually how we sustained it. Is that we've been like real friends the whole time, and like right. we enjoy just doing stuff together, whether right. we hook up or not. And there was never any jealousy. Was there any jealousy, babe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Were you ever I... like that girl's not good enough for him, or were you like that guy's not good enough for her? Did you ever I... judge each other's? Oh, I don't think I realized like how I don't want to say like unhappy he was in his last relationship until like they broke up like it seemed like everything was really good and we all mm. thought they were gonna like be in it for the long haul so mm. I was like she was cool like I liked her like how often mm. would you guys hook up I was in this relationship for two and a half years it was my okay. only, it was my only one in the meantime and like for that like we didn't hook up so let's let me just get the timeline Ooh. straight mm-hmm. so yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I try to get through eight in. years quick so yeah. you basically started hooking up there was a year that happened when Julie lived here and Andrew didn't when Andrew moved back you started hooking up again yeah then when did you get a girlfriend oh well there was like actually a long period when we stopped hooking up why well you remember when you tried to kiss me on your roof I I do so (laughs) I, I felt kind of awkward about it I feel like I was like a little unhappy with my job and I was like I felt weird about just, like, reaching out to Julie, like, oh, come over. Like, it was weird. And so, like, I, like, pulled back for a while. I eventually moved up to the city from Palo Alto. And kind of out of the blue, while I was pursuing this, like, new girlfriend, I, like, called Julie up. Like, oh, I feel good now. Like, do you want to hang out as friends? Do you want to go to dinner? Tell me what's been up. What's the timeline of that? That That was, like, like a year. No, it was, like, two years. Really? Mm -hmm. Somewhere between a year and two years. Okay. And so we went to dinner. We had a good time. And then we went back to my house, and we were sitting on, like, the roof. And It's very romantic. I made her her tea. (laughs) Oh, A good fuck always starts with tea. (laughs) Oh, I'm going to make you some tea, babe. And I kind of, like, leaned in as we were, like, looking out at the skyline. (laughs) And and she was like, Mm, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was very cute. He called me whimsical, which is like maybe my favorite compliment I've ever Aww. gotten. And he was just like, I think you're really special. I think you're really whimsical. And then he tried to kiss me. And I was kind of like, I feel like we have done this before where we do this mm. thing. And like, I think it'd probably be better if we're just friends. But then you like put two glasses of wine in me and I'd be like, hey, <laughs> is my face on your face? That's how it happens. That's why tea is not the good Yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> the answer no would be might have been a different tea. story, but. Yeah. So did you guys have like a lot of mutual friends that you would hang out with? Like, yes. Did you see each other that way a lot? Yeah, it develops more like that. Like we yeah. started to have actually this contingent of people in San Francisco who had all been to Tufts and mm. like had been mm-hmm. in the burlesque troupe. And that was oh, like the a burlesque and the burlesque troupe. troupe. And so it was like a bunch of people who <laughs> like to take their clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Sounds like an orgy yeah. way to You should to come happen. to a burlesque party. <laughs> like, yeah. fun. So no in the sex party. <laughs> so in that year that you guys like weren't really hanging out, did you still see each other through friends or was it like no contact in There that was year? a while where he was still in Palo Alto and I was up in San Francisco. Okay. So that was kind of a, like the time that we didn't really see each other because it was like it feels like a different world totally you move up here you're like i'm immersed were your significant others ever threatened by each other um i've hooked up with a lot of my guy friends <laughs> so i think like, See, like this is the anyone only. who like would have a problem with that which just wouldn't date me because i'd be like johnny yep Andrew, yep, you know. Okay, so just back to the timeline. I'm trying to <laughs> piece this all together. You, Andrew moves back. Like you guys had this almost kiss that turned into more once you had two glasses of wine. No, no. no. So, so it didn't yeah. turn into anything. Okay, more. nothing. And like you got rejected. right then, he like did, he got very, rejected. yeah, I got rejected very soon after. I like started dating this, this other girl, girl from my work. Okay, who I dated for two and a half years. Yeah, got it. Okay, so um, in that time, did you have another relationship? Julie? I had two relationships that were. <laughs> both quite dysfunctional there you go <laughs> so were you guys hanging out as friends at this point one of our the Kaxon friend that I mentioned she got married before the rest of us and so she was always a big fan of like double dates and triple dates and whatever so she was kind of the always like couple wrangler I've been on like group date kind of things mm-hmm. with him with like both of those boyfriends 
okay. Yeah. Yeah, but one of the things, like, we never hung out, like, one-on-one. Oh, okay. That time. Because yeah. that's dangerous. But I, I think it wasn't so much that it was, like, dangerous, because it wasn't like, oh, we'll just jump on each other. It was more like we, we worked really well in that, like, group setting, mm-hmm. the friend mm-hmm. setting, but we didn't find, like... A ton of one-on-one things to talk about. But, it, yeah, I guess it, se- it still seems like, yes, you guys had a baseline friendship, but mm-hmm. it didn't feel like this friendship was even that deep. Mm-mm. It was very yeah. social. It was yeah. very social. Yeah. It was actually pretty superficial. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not superficial, but like, I feel like there were a couple times when like, we would talk on the phone about something. I'd be like, I'm going to uh-huh. ask Julie for advice. Yeah. Uh, and okay. I'd say, this is like, what's going on with me. This is what I'm feeling. Like, what do you think about that? Like, so like very comfortable. Yeah. We did have like a good, like baseline comfort level. But yeah. I feel like that makes sense though. Cause like, if it's more than it would have been like dating. Yeah. So it was like at the right level right, that it right. could have had that like yeah. separation. But were there any moments that it could have crossed the line or you wanted something more. You you tell me about the roof incident. Like, what did you... Oh, I totally wanted to sleep with you. But did you want to, like, date me or just sleep with me? The second. <laughs> <laughs> um, This past year at our friend's holiday party was, I think, one of the few times... Like, not few times, but when I, like, actually kind of opened up to him a little bit more, he was like, how are things going? And I was like, I can give you the regular answer, or, like, the real answer, which is, like... He was like, I want the real answer. And I was like, things have been really rough, actually. And so we had, like, mm. I think probably a deeper conversation that we had had before, and that was kind of the start of like us getting closer mm-hmm. but before that you guys never really saw each other in that boyfriend girlfriend realm. No. he was really weird for a while <laughs> did you guys do sleepovers oh we yeah did in college um yeah didn't really do sleepovers no i think that changes the intimacy it does, level it does. a lot yeah. i actually remember that we hooked up at my old roommate's birthday party and we like had sex and then he was like all right i'm gonna go and i remember that time being kind of irritated like i was mm. like okay cool like, see you later. Bye. So when do things change? Yeah. Okay. I think here's how we have to say that. So <laughs> you guys are rehearsing this. About two years ago in May, Julie was having this little like wine brunch on the patio at her favorite like wine bar. I cooked a whole brunch for my friends because I like to do this. And then after the brunch, we were all very tipsy because everybody brought champagne because they were like, what can I bring? And I was like, just bring champagne. And so we ended up way too much champagne. Ended up going to like a wine bar. Yeah. And so the, the brunch was like girls only. And then after that, it was like, all oh, the guys are allowed to come. <laughs> the guys like in your circle of friends okay. and like feast upon the drunk girls <laughs> yeah yeah like i come to the scene like oh where should i sit and she sits me down next to her friend who i like hadn't met and so i meet her and she's like uh we like we did kind of hit it off it was like this flirty energy and i had to go i was like going to some like concert that day and she and i were like texting the whole time and i was like oh this is really fun like Julie's friend and Julie kind of gave me the like yeah like, I, I had a boyfriend at the time you were trying to set them up I wasn't trying to but I'm always like my fantasy is for all my friends to date each other so I can just like <laughs> hang out with them all the time right like it's like that's great that <laughs> totally fits with this entire thing yeah. yeah I was gonna ask did any of your other group of friends hook up with each other was it like a big incestual group <laughs> yeah that's what it sounds um, like a big cuddle puddle yes oh, so we're gonna yeah yes that's where it that's, was a very shortly after so I, I started like yeah I was talking to this girl all the time and then like she would start to come up and like hang out with me and we'd go on some dates and I was actually like I'd quit my job so I was I did like three months off so I was like free all the time like I can hang out and things were going with her but I felt like oh I don't really want a relationship I'm just having fun with this and like in the middle of that on Julie's birthday so we're we have birthdays two days apart Mm -hmm. we make it birth month and we like do a ton of things in the middle of that my roommate who had just broken up with her boyfriend was like rebounding hard and we're all at dinner and she's like hitting on Andrew so aggressively. Oh. Like really, really so, aggressively. Like everybody at the table is like, <laughs> like it's like so obvious. Like, and so she texts me and is like, can I hook up with Andrew? And I was like, he's not like my property. Like you can do whatever yeah. you want. I mean, it's like so aggressive. It's like she's wearing like a, an open back shirt and she's like leaning over me to like, oh, I have to pick this thing up. Oh, I have to. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like normally you'd be showing off the front, not the back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like trying back. to visualize this open know, What does that mean? Yeah. Sorry, not uh, okay. So it's, it's her like in like tabletop position basically with her whole, a whole back oh, exposed oh. like over Andrew okay. and everyone in the room is just she like. She basically just has a bib on. The, yeah. At this point. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, right. Right. okay. That yeah. gives a little more context. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so, so we have up and then like oh, okay. the, the other friends didn't like 
life back because she didn't know about our incestuous group. <laughs> she, yeah, she didn't know. And, and it's not like we were like dating or exclusive. We just like hung out a few times and we were talking a yeah. lot. I don't know. She was really upset. In general, our group is very like sex positive. Like it's yeah. like we kind of understand the distinction between like sometimes sex is just sex and sometimes it's more than that. Yeah. And so my roommate is a very like sex positive person. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. like for them, it, like I think both Andrew and my old roommate were like, this is just sex. Where this my, my yeah. other friend, I think, was hoping for more. Mm. And even though like Andrew was kind of saying, because I'm hearing both like this from both perspectives, even though Andrew kind of kept saying like, I don't want anything serious, the fact that he would like come to San Jose to see her, she was kind of reading more in some Is it weird that you were in the middle of this given your history with Andrew? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because then it ended up with her kind of telling me all this bad stuff about him and me kind of being like, do I want to like be friends with this guy? Like he mm. kind of really just fucked over my friend. And is actively fucking my other friends. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to no, try no. to understand this mm-hmm. a little more. So this is just trying to put <laughs> yeah, the timeline oh, together. Oh yeah. No, it's complicated. Everyone's this fucking. Is, that's, <laughs> my, basically, that's what's going on right now. Is there so anyone ju- not talking? Not fucking. <laughs> Julie, you have a boyfriend at this stage. Yes. Okay. So I was actually very not jealous about okay. any of this. Got like, it. I really so liked you... my boyfriend. I was like very happy. Like thought that was like kind of the long haul thing. Was just like, yeah, you can fuck whoever. Like everyone Got it. can fuck so you everyone. You thought at this point you and Andrew were over. Yeah. At this point, had you broken up with your girlfriend? Oh yeah, that had okay. been like a year or two before. Is this Got 2017 it. that we're talking this is about? 2017. This is 2017. Okay. Got it. It's mm-hmm. like a year ago. Okay. Well, I'm still not Close clear to where ago. the transitions happen. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. everyone's sh- fucking. Everyone, <laughs> everyone is fucking. Everyone's fucking. So at that time, I had like broken up with her friend. I said like, no, really, like this isn't going anywhere. And like it's like gotta be over. She was really upset. Julie was really mad at me. Julie didn't talk to me for months. Oh. We'd be at the same events. Mature. And Julie Because would... of how yeah. you fucked over her friend. Yeah. Okay. You know, she, we'd be at events and she'd like be there. She wouldn't talk to you. She'd leave early. Wow, you were very mad at him. Yeah. More mad at him about this than anything that transpired between you two over the years. Yeah, because like. I felt like he was not being honest and that like really bothered me. Like mm. I felt like he was not being straight up with her. And then... This was during the summer. Mm-hmm. We weren't talking until like to October and we went to like it was like Harley Strictly Bluegrass mm-hmm. and we had a whole big group of friends going and Julie was there Julie wasn't like hanging out with me talking to that much she's you know hi mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and one of our friends were like or convinced me she's like you should really apologize to Julie or you should just talk to her you should talk to her I apologize to Julie I said like I'm really sorry how it ended up with your friend I didn't mean to hurt somebody who's important to you and like this mm-hmm. is not the way I want to behave mm-hmm. and Julie accepted my apology like day later she likes one of my instagram posts. oh yeah that's when you know all is good in the world <laughs> i screenshot it and sent to our other friend like we're back uh, <laughs> yeah and then so then we started hanging out more but i think like when things really kind of took off again like early spring so almost exactly a year ago just yeah. to make sure i'm sure. on the right time again this is like now october we're, now we're february then, 2018 so basically like another six months from your reconciliation you guys are friends yeah, so mm-hmm. October, we like, we make up at the festival. Mm-hmm. December, at a Christmas party, I ask, hey, Julie, how you doing? And she's like, do you want the real answer or the, like, the so-so oh, okay. answer? And then mm-hmm. I'm like, the real answer. She's like, I'm not doing so well. And I'm like, okay, wow, she really opened up to me. And you guys are not hooking up at We're this not time. hooking up. I had kind of, like, sworn I was never going to hook up with him again after he hooked up with my, like, uh, two friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and then I... What is it? In January, like a month later, our friend is having a birthday party. <laughs> Julie comes to the birthday party and she says like hey whatever happens like don't let me hook up with Andrew I said this to my roommate I was like <laughs> I I, because I know myself and I like knew if I saw him there I was going to like make out with him I was like 100% sure of that so I was like don't let me do it and then like a few of like a couple hours later she's like hey so that thing I was like it's too late it's gonna happen <laughs> she was like oh, all right like you do oh we've all been there before. yes have we I you're like I have it <laughs> so we did again the really public aggressive make out and then I was like I'm ordering my uber pool for one and he was like oh okay cool so I and went I, home I feel like we had a conversation around that of like yeah, it's just like not going to go any farther. Yes, yeah. like we're yeah. we're not oh, having sex. Just to make out. I was yeah. just very clear. We're never having sex again until February when then we had sex okay. again. Okay. So what happened in February? Uh, you, you can did say. you want did you want to share? You can say. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had had a threesome once in college, and so we were like out one night with someone in burlesque. No, actually, (laughs) one of my housemates, like serendipitous moments where my housemate and I were like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And we were all kind of like, yep. 
this is happening. Like, and then, um, <laughs> so it's like February of last year, and I'm we're at like at this bar, we're all dancing with our friends. And I was like, it's like hey, 90s night. so <laughs> <laughs> that color, it's it was nice. <laughs> No scrubs has just played. Yeah. Right for all. It's a really special <laughs> well, all good threesomes happened after uh, So I was kind of like, hey, do you maybe want to have another threesome? That was fun. And he was like, I thought we were never having sex again. I was like, it doesn't count. Someone else is there, right? So. <laughs> I love these loopholes. <laughs> so many loopholes, Julie. Um, so I'm kind of like scoping the crowd to like see who would make a good fit. And then I have this friend who's visiting from Germany and she's kind of oh, like. Right. I'm down. And then my other two friends who are a couple were like, wait, what are you guys doing? And we're like, oh my we're going to maybe have a threesome. And they're like, can we come? So, so we became like, an orgy. So it kind yeah. of became like group sex. Yeah. yeah um, oh. Five some. Yeah. Five some. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> but I think like how we kind of left that was we both had kind of wished it was like just the two of us. Oh. Um, interesting. No. So yeah. that is. So that's how Friends with Benefits turns into a real <laughs> have thing. Have an orgy. Have some. <laughs> Yeah. Have a friend from <laughs> Germany. That's when you know you're really meant for each other. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of awesome that he knows, like, all of my ex-boyfriends. Like, when I'm like, oh, this ex, he's like, yeah, totally. I remember we, like, just kind of know everything. And then, so that's when my friend, my old roommate, who they had hooked up, moved to Australia. So we were hanging out, like, every weekend, like, okay. all the time, because every weekend was, like, this party, like, celebrating yeah, her. Yeah, we, so... we had, like, a two-month lead-up where she's yeah. like, okay, I'm moving, and we're like, we're doing oh, this, wow, we're we doing this, we're doing this. Got it, okay. Got it. So there was a so lot of social engagement. We were hanging out, like, every okay. weekend, and, like, the more we were hanging out, we were like, wait, this is really fun, and we really like hanging out together. Mm. And, like, why are we both still, like, dating other people mm. when we'd rather kind of just spend time with each other? Did you ever, like, meet up on your own, or was it only through group activities We started still? hanging out on our own. We started hanging out on our own. And then you guys okay. started talking about this openly, that you, yes. you want yeah. to spend more time we romantically. also had, like, a good acid trip together in there. That <laughs> was helpful. That's another way that this turns into more. <laughs> yeah, I've got so many recommendations that I can't, I, like, um, I wasn't expecting an acid trip. <laughs> Hey, that's where most people have their epiphanies. We, like, yeah. really bonded. Um, <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's when we kind of started having, like, sleepovers. Most weekends, okay. we were still both, like, going on dates mm. on a, like, occasion. But then okay, we kind of, you were going okay, on I dates. Was going I on was dates. like, I reserve the right to, to, like, not be exclusive and, like, I'm going to I'm gonna go date. But I'm really bad at dating. You only thing. hook up with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> so much easier. <laughs> or friends of friends. <laughs> actively dating i was like sort of trying to be actively dating I yeah was, like, not really on some apps but i just didn't have the heart so you for were it. not actively dating though because you were being like i want to be exclusive it was more just out of i just wasn't motivated well because you had sex all the time too right? that's yeah. true had sex all the time that's true. <laughs> and then julie results. you were actively dating other people i was but i definitely got to a point pretty quickly where i didn't really want to be um but it was kind of like a, we were at a point for a while where like i wanted more and he kept kind of of like why? pumping the brakes. Oh, why? Yeah, let's talk about this. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess one, it had been so long of like we had just been friends. So I was like, no, 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 this is like it's just friends. That's all we are. And which would get like very annoying after a while. And I was like, we're hanging out all the time. We have sex. We have everything that a relationship is. Like we're like best friends. We hook up. What else do you want? Yeah, but I thought you guys were kind of coming to this epiphany that it was more. It, it wasn't that like we were becoming more intimate. We could talk about more things together and mm -hmm. we were like much more comfortable just spending time together and talking okay. all the time. But it kind of just, it wasn't the way I imagined my life going. Mm. Well, how, yeah. how did you imagine your life going? Why don't we take a quick break so I can tell you about some of the best cosmetics I've ever used. That would be Hourglass Cosmetics. Those of you who know me or have seen me know that I don't wear much makeup due to sensitive skin. So the little makeup I do wear, it has to be made of the best ingredients. I love that Hourglass is 100% cruelty free, it's vegan, and it really works. All wrapped up in beautiful, luxurious packaging. You all know by now that I love the Caution Mascara, which Allure Magazine calls a lash lift in a tube. Its advanced vegan formula never flakes or smudges, even after wearing it all day. The taper brush delivers endless length, intense volume, and lift. It's a game changer. 
Discover Hourglass like I did and experience unparalleled next generation performance by visiting hourglasscosmetics.com slash datable and use the promo code datable to get free shipping with your purchase of a full size caution mascara. That's hourglass spelled H-O-U-R-G-L-A-S-S cosmetics.com slash datable and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. Now back to the show. Well, how, how did you imagine your life going? Uh, a six sum well, this, or this, a seven <laughs> sum? Uh, I know, it's a fair question. It's kind of embarrassing now, but um, in some ways, my last girlfriend had been a lot like me. She'd been like a software engineer and like introverted, um, and I'm neither of those things. Very like logical and put together. And I was kind of looking for another person like her. And you so I was to having. date s- yourself. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, Julia, I had so much fun with Julie, but it just, like, didn't match my, like, well, what's, what do I look for in a partner? Oh, interesting. Uh, Is I that what about how guys put women in buckets? One, the fun, casual ones will never really be girlfriends, and then there's, like, yeah, the girlfriend and, serious bucket. And it's, like, it's kind of silly because I was having so much fun with her, and, like, mm-hmm. she complimented me really well, but I just was like, no, no, it's not happening. And then one of our friends had said to us, like, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, if this was going to happen, it would have happened happened a long time ago I think oh yeah that totally freaked him out and that was just like to be like oh wow this person like she sees me she understands and Mm. so this was in June right near all our birthdays when I heard this and I'd already been kind of like eh and Julie was going to Europe for the whole month of July and so right before that I was like okay we're breaking up and it's like for good this time oh you didn't want to continue this I was like that's like it would be awful it would be awful to do it like right before we have all these birthday parties and like trips and weekends away we'll just do it right before she goes to Europe and then it's like we both have our like time and a space a whole month apart mm-hmm. yeah. okay so when he breaks up with you what's going through your mind Julie I no, and he'd been like acting a little weird, but he's kind of a weird dude, so like <laughs> I didn't know if it was like that much weirder than normal because he is very introverted, so he like goes into his head for a lot of things, right? Mm. But I definitely was kind of picking up on something, and so when he said that, I was like, okay, I'm very sad, but I'm not all that surprised. And I had to, like I got to go away for a month and like have like a really great time. So were you upset? Like yeah, I was really you upset. were upset. I was okay, very so upset. even though you were going away for a month. You were. And you I thought had a, this was going somewhere. Um. Yes. And no, because like, yes, he was being very frustrating a lot. Like, it was just kind of like, it was this like disconnect between his feelings and his thoughts, right? So when he Mm. was with me, he would be like so happy and like we had so much fun and I would see it. Like, it's like, it was very obvious to me. And then when we were apart, like, it was like he would overthink things. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I'd Mm -hmm. go away. I went away for like a long weekend and I got back and he was like, I just don't know. And I was Uh like, yeah. And so it was kind of this like thing that I kept being like, well, when you're with me, how do you feel? He's like, good. I'm like, so why do you keep getting in your head about it? Right. And I don't, if you know, if you mind, like when we got back, like he went to see a therapist and I think that that was very helpful. So, okay, so when you got back from Europe... When I got back, it was very obvious we still had chemistry. Like, it was just, like... Were you guys in contact while you were away? Very little. little. Like, a very... Like, I kind of wanted him to know I didn't hate him or anything. So I would, like, text him on occasion be like, hey, this is where we are, whatever. I offered to, like, do stuff if she needed her house. Like, I I think I... Did I have a set of keys still? Yeah. So you get back and you guys meet up. We went to Outside Lands with two of our other (laughs) friends. We had planned this, like, before I left. And we had, like, a lot of chemistry and I was like okay this is not just me like this is not one sided like There's and then a lot, I, lot of chemistry yeah and then yeah. I talked to my friend about it and I was like I just don't really get it like I don't understand like what's missing for him and I'm mm. frustrated because like I like I really care about this guy and I like really wanted to be with him and I was huh. like I don't know why this like isn't working when like it just seems like it should work and she was like I, I didn't tell you this but like he was feeling a lot the same way like that oh. he kind of I was so over while you were away, you were confiding in this other friend. I was actually so unhappy while she was away. Uh. Like, I was so sad that whole month. I just, like, bought a video game. I'm like, I just <laughs> 100 hours in this video game to, like, avoid my feelings. Sometimes it just takes going away for these feelings to really surface. Yeah. So you were happy when she was back. I was happy when she was back, but it was weird. And I, like, I really wanted to tell her, like, I was so sad when you weren't here. And, like, mm. she was kind of like, I need to keep a little bit of distance. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she was Fair hurt. enough, yeah. And I'm like, but I, I just really want to talk to you. So when did and the final thing happen? We're okay. in August last year now. We've just gone out. So okay. we just had, like, the most amazing time together. Our friends were kind of like, hey, you two, stop. <laughs> um, we were dancing very aggressively together to the weekend. 
friends, and they were like, you need to separate. And we were like, we don't want to. Oh my god, your friends are just like, we are so sick of it. We are so sick of it. All the years. Yeah. Yeah, then it's then it's early September, and I've actually like gone on a couple dates now, okay. and she's she's been dating too. Mm-hmm. And there's like one Saturday night, and she asks something like she texts me like, "Oh, how did your date go?" Because I mentioned it's a stupid question. I'm stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And why I was, did you ask? And at like 10 p.m., I'm like, "Oh, she just left." Like we'd have like a really long date, and Julie's like, "Fuck." All right. Why did oh. I even? Yeah, ask I you about I can't it. do this. This is terrible. This is so like I don't like this at all. And so jealousy is seeping in now. That I was just like, "Why am I doing this to myself? Like, why am I?" Right torturing myself like wanting to hear about his fucking date when like I want to be with him yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so the next morning I think we talk on the phone we're like if this isn't going to be a thing then we need to we need to like not talk to each other for a few weeks oh like cutting off cold turkey like okay our friend is coming to visit at the end of September (laughs) and like that's the I love it's always like delayed so basically from like uh, like June to September though there's like this weird term uh, on and off again. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. okay and so that's the date where we're like okay we can talk her again when she comes because we'll be hanging out with her anyway yeah okay. um, but until then we should just like which not really would have see been about other. three weeks like I, we would have had like a three week break but we lasted like a week coincidentally she'd also recommended a therapist for me yes. and like my first session with him was going to be that day when our friend came back and mm. so it's like okay maybe like talking to the therapist will help me like figure out my feelings mm. and why I feel so conflicted about this that afternoon right after we had this conversation on the phone I like had a freak like back accident I was like on the phone like talking to my dad and I just like twisted and like all of a sudden something pulled and I'm like on the floor I was like a heap I couldn't move and and I called some friends and they're like oh yeah I could come over I'm like well I'll let you know if you need to Mm. and I eventually called one I'm like okay I really can't move I need to get some food I'm like I'm gonna die I'm not gonna die but like (laughs) Um, I was was like army crawling around my house. I call one person and he's kind of like, oh, I just like ate a weed brownie. I can't. Uh, (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me? Very dependable friends. (laughs) And so we still had each other on Find My Friends. I I look her up on Find My Friends and I see that she's like somewhere that I don't know. And I'm like, this looks like a residential area. Maybe she's on a date, but she was like the one person I knew I could count on. So I like, I don't know if I texted or called you first, but I'm like, look, it's an emergency. Like I heard my back and I, I really need some help that same day same day and I felt so bad because she's like we can't talk for this amount of time and I'm like I would love to talk to you but like I understand that I have to give you your space yeah and so she came over yeah so I was on a date and it was a really Ugh. awkward date because I had like just had this conversation with Andrew and I was like very heartbroken and so I tried to cancel this date and the guy was like but I'm going out of town and when else can we do it and I was like mm. oh god <laughs> so I was like I'm just gonna get high first because I was like no as one like, would no I'm your pain you know so I went on the date and it was just like him really keep, like continuously like, trying to like, get close to me and me being like oh my god this was a mistake like this was a mistake so when I got this like emergency call even though I was from him it was like so excited it's like that thing you dream about of, oh, what happened oh my god I have to come right now oh god I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I've got to go and so I was like thrilled like kind of very angry at him but like so happy I had out to get that state yeah, yeah. So I went and I like bought him Advil and I bought him food and I was like great like caretaker like so sweet. He was like sobbing, sorry. Oh, he was really? like yeah, it felt very much like when I got there it's like he didn't really believe I would come until I got there and he just Aww. kind of like broke down. And so I like took care of him for a couple hours, put him in bed and he was like are we still not talking? And I was like yeah, we're still not talking. Oh. He was like okay. Oh my gosh. Andrew, what, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Way to stay objective. <laughs> <laughs> why were you crying when she showed up or why did you cry when oh she- wow I mean it was so many like one I was like physically immobile I was like unable to take care of myself and like there she was and she came out of her way to like to help me to really mm-hmm. like save me and I was already sad that morning like I cried when I got off the phone with her like mm-hmm. I didn't want to not talk to her I didn't want her to not be in my life like here she was and it was just it was completely overwhelming I'd like held it together while I was by myself but I kind of feel like like she was the person I could like safely like, yeah cut loose around yeah okay um, wow. so a week goes by after this a week okay. and I I like don't really go to work I'm just going to the chiropractor every day and like I can't I can't 
can't focus. I can't do anything because my back hurts so much. And the next weekend, I feel like one of our friends had like a birthday party. We both went to that. And okay, so we're talking at this thing. And that's like a that's like a little on ramp for us. It's like, oh, we can talk. We can enjoy each other a little bit. <laughs> The um, friends always pull you back. <laughs> yeah, the friends and are. Then it was, I think, angels. then it was two weeks later. It was the day that our, our friend came to visit. And I went to, like, see this new therapist that morning. I was, like, explaining to him, okay, here's the backstory. Mm-hmm. Here's the situation with Julie. Here's, like, the things that I'm thinking and feeling. As I'm explaining it to him, I'm like, wow, this sounds really stupid. <laughs> Sometimes you need to just say yeah. it out loud. Yeah. The thing was, like, I'd talked to, like, friends and family before about it. And, yeah. like, I'd said, like, oh, she, you know, she just isn't this. And, like, they're like, well, you know, what can you do? Like, that doesn't work. It's, you know, she's just not like you, maybe. And But I talked to him, and he's like, well, okay, so how do you feel? Like, your feelings are valid. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm so happy when I'm with Julie. Then, like, why do I keep not doing this? Mm. I think I had this other realization that, like, how would I ever invite somebody else into my life if I want to keep Julie as my best friend? Mm. What, what kind of woman am I going to meet who I'm going to start mm. dating right. if I still have all these feelings for Julie? Right. It'd be unfair. It'd be unfair. And also, like, what's what does that even look like? Do I just, like, cut off this right. big part of my life and, like, start a new life? That That's, like, really weird. So it kind of, like, occurred to me. One, I was accepting my feelings. And two, I'm like, if I want to, like, go anywhere, I have to just, like, go through this. So you realized it earlier that everything was here. I'm Did- smarter. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. the more you evolved, obviously. I feel like this is always the story, not to gender stereotype, but always. <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. yeah. So did you ever, like, have, like, a moment that you were just like, why aren't you seeing what I'm yeah, seeing? Yeah, and we had conversations about it because you'd be like, well, something's missing. And I was like, what? Like, you can't name it. Like, there, because there's nothing. And I was like, and I would get, re- yeah, I'd get really frustrated because I was like, we are really good together. And at one point he kind of was like, but you're not, like, a software. Like, he said this kind I of thing to me. That. I, I did know. not say that. I know. But it was like, that was kind of the underlying. And I was like, you're right. I'm not. And, like, if you can't deal with that, then you're like, yeah, we are never going to work. But I think, like, the other thing that like I had kind of accepted I went to like a really like intense high you know Palo Alto like really intense high school like Mm. all this kind of drive to be like the best at things and so I felt like a few years ago when I'd gone through my own therapy I kind of like let go of that Mm. of just like I don't have to be like the The best at everything and I I feel like he hadn't done that yet so he was still holding himself to these like really high standards and he was like it's not okay that like you're okay being average basically which is like kind of the words I had used he wasn't there yet yeah he was like no it's it's like we have to like achieve things and I want a partner who wants to achieve things and I was like just because I'm okay not being the best doesn't mean I don't want to achieve but that was kind of a conversation that we had that he had to kind of get to on his own was like we don't always have to hold ourselves to these like ridiculous standards and you're gonna be a lot happier Interesting. if you stay that was the big thing that was like I at one point was able to like verbalize that and I'm like that's the fundamental like difference in how we look at our lives that like doesn't work for me. Interesting. So, okay, this is one thing that's going through my head mm-hmm. is like, how did you maintain like confidence through all this? Because I feel like um, hearing someone being like, you're not the one for me, yeah. like that has got to take a toll. I know. And it's actually very funny because it's like, I think I went against like any advice I would ever give to like anyone else, right? But it was this like actions over words, right? And his actions always like, I was reading into that more than like mm. what he would say of like that he, this guy cares about me like a lot. And like, I kind of would see every time like he would try to pull away he was very bad at it right <laughs> so I was kind of like okay this is not it's not just me and right, I had like right. told that to him once I was like you kind of keep saying this these things but like I'm not in this alone otherwise right. this would have ended a long time ago right, right. and it would have been very easy something keeps kind of pulling you back too and so I think that's yeah. where I kind of was stupid and put all of our friends through like a lot of just like these ups and downs and like oh but they were wonderful and like I think I just kind of I knew that what I felt was like real and I yeah. thought that he would get there. So yeah. when did you guys become official? Great. On Halloween. That was on Halloween. <laughs> there was a different part to it. The part that allowed us to become official. Mm-hmm. So like after this like first, second therapy session and I'm like realizing these feelings, that was when you decided that oh, you yeah. were going to quit your job and you were going to go travel mm-hmm. for like a few months. Mm-hmm. Nice. That actually changed our relationship a lot. After that, Julie said like, okay, I'm going to go away. I'm going to get over you. In the meantime, you're my best friend and I just want to enjoy the time we have together. And like with no no pressure, like let's just like enjoy our time before I leave in a month. Mm. And so we started hanging out a whole bunch. And I remember we had like, a, I made dinner for her one time and like we were like dancing in my apartment. And then, she, and then I like, she said something like, 
do you want to kiss me? Like, you can just kiss me. And I'm like, yeah. can, can I do that? I, I do want, is that okay? Is it all right? And she's like, you know, there's there's really like no pressure here. Just like, let's enjoy each other. You know, I'm leaving anyway. And right. did you truly feel that way? Like, how did you, like, I feel like it's sometimes tough if you have like an uh, end goal in mind. I felt like we were both like kind of torturing each other when we like weren't hooking up a little bit. Like we would like hang out, but it was like kind of clear we both wanted to. So I mm. did kind of think, okay, as long as I know I have this time to get over him, if that's what I need to do, which like maybe I was telling him that, but I also kind of didn't believe it. I was like, I do have this fallback of like, if this is what I need to do, I'm going to have this time and space to right. like, get over him. So right now I'm just going to like enjoy your time yes. together. And I'm just going to like let myself do the things I want to do. Right. But for me, that like totally released me. It's like, you don't have to be in a relationship. You just have to like enjoy yourself and be happy mm. and, like with this person that you really enjoy. And so the loss of that pressure, I feel like it kind of just like leaned into it and then I introduced her as my girlfriend. <laughs> it's official now. <laughs> Eight years later. <laughs> it was like very like, funny. You get your dick away from me like this is my girlfriend. <laughs> we were at this party with like a bunch of our friends and he was like this is my girlfriend and all the other couples who were there were like wait do we have to like introduce each other also? Like <laughs> yeah. do, we, do we have to label it? Because everyone just thought we were together because we act like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting. So what were yeah. you feeling when you heard that? Oh my god it was just was like after- this is before I actually left so we were in a relationship the whole time I was gone where were you? I was in Vietnam and Cambodia and then he met me in Australia which was so much fun so I did have like some fear when I left that he was going to do his overthinking thing but Mm -hmm. he never did and it's like we talked all the time and Australia was really really awesome and then like yeah we had our first trip together it was great (laughs) wow Wow. eight years later I know (laughs) (laughs) wow this is a Incredible world yeah. 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 Yes, it's a nice little soap opera that we've got. <laughs> so if you could go back in time, would mm-hmm. you do anything different or would you let it play out the way it did? Honestly, I feel like neither of us would have been in a place to be in like a committed relationship like this mm. anytime this could have happened in the past. Like I know that I definitely had my own issues to work out and I think I was just a little bit ahead of him in terms of that. Yeah, we both had to get here. Uh, well, so everyone's on their own journey, yeah, but then your relationship is also mm-hmm. on a yeah. journey itself it sounds like you guys have been through 10 different relationships <laughs> yeah in the last eight years yes. even though you're with the same person it's yes. yeah. changed so totally. much even yeah. the way you guys talked about each other in the beginning was just basically like so casual so like throwaway you yeah. know it's just like someone i hang out with and yeah. do burlesque with yeah. and then now it's someone that you show vulnerability to and yeah. your weaknesses and someone who's seen you at your worst andrew yeah. And who was there when and showed up? She, even though she was high, she still showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, friend with the big brownie. <laughs> but it really sounds like you said something, Andrew, earlier that just so resonated with me. You said, I have to go through this in order yeah. to get to that next step. Sometimes we try to avoid certain things, like yeah. thinking that it's going to take us somewhere else. Yeah. But there's certain things that are unavoidable. You have to go through this experience to get to where you want to be yeah there's all this time that you you don't want to believe that you have to go through it or that you could maybe like think your way out of it Mm -hmm. (laughs) but no you got to play the hand that you're dealt how do you think this prolonged situation i guess Mm -hmm. helped your current day relationship i think we've kind of like had so much like the difficult stuff already like i feel like we kind of before we even like got together we've like worked through like so much shit that it's like now we kind of just get to enjoy like the good stuff and we kind of also both know how we handle difficulties i think that's like Mm -hmm. something we we know that we can get through conflicts we know that we can get through fights we know like i kind of know what he's in inclined to do and I also like really love that we like know each other's history like I think some people wouldn't want to know that but like I for like for me like I love that he already like he's not gonna find anything out out that he like doesn't know it's like he knows me he knows me nothing so well exactly and it's like if he wants to be with me then like when he knows all of this then like I know that he sees it and like really wants to be with me and you guys have like even though you Mm -hmm. haven't been dating for eight years Mm -hmm. you've been like in each other's histories Mm -hmm. and lives yeah as well Mm -hmm. see this is something we can't get with modern dating where you just Mm -hmm. meet someone now you don't Mm -hmm. have that history together right so you have to almost like recreate all this history and it takes time so what 
do you think, like, what's some advice you would give to people who are currently in where you guys were, like, let's say two or three years ago? I think, like, just take a closer look at people around you and kind of give them the time because I think that's what it was. We never really gave each other the time. Mm -hmm. And when we actually did, there was a lot more there than I think either of us maybe realized. One of the things we always, like, respected each other Mm -hmm. and tried to treat each other well Mm -hmm. and take care of one another, even if we didn't feel like boyfriend, girlfriend about it during this time that we were like on and off uh we had some friends who were like doing a really messy awful breakup Mm. and just like yelling at each other and all that like Mm -hmm. throughout all this even though like i tried to initiate the breakup conversation like three times i still feel like we we treated each other with respect and we tried to like we didn't try to be mean we like never said anything bad about each other like to our friends so even if i would say i feel like this or i'm really frustrated about this i would never be like he's an asshole like because i don't believe right and your marriage and Family and marriage therapist, yes. right, Julie? <laughs> what, I guess, what have you taken from your, like, studies and, mm-hmm. like, to this mm-hmm. relationship? I think, like, the biggest thing I've learned is, like, how to deal with conflict and stuff. And, that, like, relationships are not always easy. And that's okay. I think, like, in, in social media, all this stuff, you kind of read, like, relationships should make you happy and they should be this and that. And it's, like, that's just not the reality mm-hmm. of a relationship every day of every week. It's, like, there's going to be times when you're tested and that you go through conflict. And it's actually kind of more how you bounce back from that than the fact that you have it. Like, it's when couples tell me we never fight or we don't have any, like, arguments, right. that's actually more oh, that's, of a red flag. Yeah. To me, the people who are like, yeah, we fight about like X, Y, and Z. And it's like, if you can bounce back from those fights, that says a lot more about you than the fact that you have them. And so not every relationship is going to look the same. Not every journey is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. But I'm really, really happy now. And I trust him. Like, I think it'd be really easy not to after kind of the ups and downs. But I do. And I think that's kind of the foundation that we have is like trust and respect and Mm-hmm. And like a lot of fun. So I think it's interesting because like this is obviously a great uh, success story <laughs> of an on and off again friends with benefits. But for mm-hmm. every great success, there's probably like a hundred that just don't work. Right. Out, right. Mm-hmm. Like what advice would you give to people if they were looking at their own situation of when to cut mm-hmm. the cord versus kind of like what you said, keep having faith and like mm-hmm. know in your core it's going to work out. Well, I like that you like brought up respect because I think if you're not feeling respected, I kind of always knew even when he was doing things that really pissed me off but it was like him and his head you know and like mm. that like I, you don't want to like um try to prescribe intent to someone but it was like I knew that he cared about me like through everything it's like I knew that he cared about me and like that helps if you're not feeling respected or you're feeling like someone's like lying to you or deceiving you you mm-hmm. I think that's the other thing he was yeah. always honest with me about where he was yeah I felt like the way you guys were talking about each other even in the earlier years mm-hmm. there was it was judgment free yeah. Yeah. yeah it was never like she did this yeah. and I couldn't mm-hmm. believe it or he was with this person it was just yeah. kind of like very judgment free yeah. Yeah. well I think that's a good segue to takeaways because I think mm. one that I have is that like even though it's been eight years mm-hmm. like you both kind of lived your lives mm-hmm. yeah. parallel mm-hmm. and like you didn't it wasn't like one of you waiting around for eight years no. like there yeah. was a period that was in flux I think yeah. that's natural but yeah. it wasn't like eight years of sitting yeah. there hoping that something would change yeah like, it did kind of just naturally come together. And I think like the reality is like, that's the only way it's going to, if you're trying to force something, it's never going to. If you're like pining. Yeah. I think that's the thing is I gave myself a deadline. Like that was kind of the, the trip was like, well, if this doesn't happen before then, like, I need to move on. And that was, like, for me, respecting myself, I had mm-hmm. to kind of give myself that of, like, can't wait around for someone who doesn't want to be with you. Right. And luckily, we did. But <laughs> even, like, when you guys were hooking up, it yeah. wasn't like you were like, oh, I really want him to be my boyfriend. Like, you kind of just accepted what it was yeah. at that stage. Like, yeah. I think friends with benefits get into trouble if one person mm-hmm. wants Wanting more. something mm-hmm. more, right. which is usually the case. Right. Yeah. But I think mm-hmm. eventually it did get to that place, but you both eventually got to that yeah, yeah. that's when it works got there right. a little yeah. bit faster exactly <laughs> and that's I'm, a, just, I'm just too advanced you know <laughs> I, mean, I think that's a good takeaway in general and I'll mm-hmm. let you go on to some of them is that sometimes like people don't get to the same place at mm-hmm. the same time mm-hmm. and I think a lot of times you're like oh well they don't have the same feelings as me like fuck them like I need to move on to find someone that does mm-hmm. it's hard because sometimes like you don't want again don't want to like wait around for someone that yeah. isn't going to catch up but at the same time if you do know in your core that like you can see them going there like maybe it does make sense to have some faith but not again wait for years and years on something I think the fresh perspective I'm taking away from your story is 
you can't force things to happen, but right. you on the flip side is you also can't force things to not happen. <laughs> yeah. So in the course of the last eight years, you guys had so many rules towards the end. We can't see each other for the next two weeks. Mm-hmm. We can't talk to each other when I'm on vacation. Mm-hmm. We right. can't do this. We can't do that. But you broke all the rules. <laughs> yeah. None of those rules yeah. you withheld. But in the beginning of your casual relationship, you were fine not talking to each other for a year or two mm-hmm. without yeah. setting any of these boundaries. Yeah. So I think on one hand, we can't force things to happen, but also listen to the universe. If you do see that you keep being attracted or magnetized to that person over and over again in social situations or just on the street or you, you're thinking about them, listen to mm-hmm. those signs because there is something there possibly and you can't force yourself to take to be away from that right and the other takeaway i have is and you always learn this in therapy is your feelings are always valid yeah in the, mo- in the moment you feel them so even julie you were like i just don't know why he doesn't see it this way he actually didn't at that point yeah. right we have to respect each other to and validate if your partner doesn't see the things that you see then we have have to respect them and right. let them go mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean that they're bad for not seeing it no. it's just the way it is it, it it is and sometimes I know it's frustrating I've been in relationships where I feel like it can't just be me feeling this yeah. it, I, it can't just be me feeling this this attraction or this passion or this this magnetism but sometimes you just have to the best thing is to let them go, mm-hmm. let them go on their journey, mm-hmm. yep. feel it. And if they actually do feel it, they will come back. But you can't pause your life. Yeah. 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 The other takeaway is we're always constantly trying to find someone new in our lives. Why don't we just look around yeah. who we have in our lives already? That's a good point. Right? Because mm-hmm. sometimes we write people off so fast, especially right. men. This happens with men so much because I think for a lot of guys, there's just all these buckets and compartments. Mm-hmm. And if yep. some girl doesn't fit into that bucket, they don't go in there yeah. and you become really hot-headed about it or so. what they visualized I think that was like mm-hmm. a key part is like this visualization you have the perfect mate for you might yeah. not actually be the person might yeah. be like, right there then you're just missing you them. know what's really hard about that is like I could think about it and know that like well I've imagined this list of criteria or these filters that I have and I know that that's wrong that's not like gonna get me mm the outcome I want but I still feel that way I still feel like that stuff is important to me yeah and it took a lot of like processing to like to get over that and to realize the important thing was just like feeling good with someone social constructs right for yeah. with therapy yeah. you're just unraveling mm. what you've learned in the right. past and yeah. what you're influenced by by your environment right and why these things are important to you but at the core of it is you hold on to your values and and what you think is important and what society thinks is important may not align. Okay. Or do you guys have any yeah. other takeaways? I think therapy is just like, if you're ever feeling really like conflicted or confused mm. as to like why things aren't working the way, because I, I think for my, my, like myself as well, like it was like, when things like aren't lining up for some reason, like whether it's your thoughts and your feelings aren't aligning or it's like like what you think should be happening isn't lining up with your reality. Like, like you said, like therapy and kind of unraveling all of that and like the stories that you're telling yourself and like, Sometimes you have no idea what you're, like, putting out, mm-hmm. you know? And so, I don't know, I think for, like, both of us in separate contexts, it's just been, like, so helpful to, like, kind of... Yeah. 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 You're always kind of trying to, like, heal your own problems in, like, not always a good way. And yeah. you're taking that out on your relationships and you have this, like, friction because you haven't dealt with that stuff. Yeah. That's come back on episode after episode yeah, and every personal episode. lives, all that. Yeah. Great story. I mean, <laughs> I'm so captivated. <laughs> we have a whole Excel spreadsheet of your timeline. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it just goes to show you that one, I think the foundation of any good relationship is a friendship. Yes. And yeah. for anybody who tries to force something romantic in the beginning of a relationship, it just can't, it can't be forced that way. And that's, yeah. I think that's why we're having a su- having such a hard time with online dating. Right, because it's like you go to that date, you're expected to first fall in date. love immediately, yeah, right? Yeah, first date, you're like, I don't know if I see it. Like, what are you seeing? Right. Yeah. Do you, I guess the basic questions are, you guys kept yeah. alluding to this. One, I really enjoy spending time with this person. Yeah. Yes. Two, we have a lot of fun together. Yeah. 
Three, I know they're dependable and will show up for me. And four, I know that I will always be there for them too. Yep. So those are four basic principles that has nothing to do with romance. Right. Yeah. But I think some of that has to develop over time. Like yeah. you can't see that on date two. Mm-hmm. Like it's just not realistic. Unless if you just hurt your back on date two. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's the new strategy. And then she might come off as very desperate if she's like, yeah, I'm here for you. Yeah. I'll totally take care of you. Give me the keys. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's another right. point, like, it is important, though, to stay true of what you're actually looking for, because I think there was a point, Julie, that you were like, I do want a relationship. Yeah. And I think, like, if you would just continue to, like, hook up and friends with benefits and not put any of the conversations in place, yeah. like, that would not have been serving for either no. one of you, and it probably would not have got to where things are today. No, and I think also I would have just been, like, silently miserable. Exactly. And like, yeah. Have you guys talked about a contingency plan in case this relationship does not work out? How yeah. would you handle your quote unquote friendship going forward? Since we've kind of had to do that already. <laughs> um, <laughs> Multiple think, times. Yeah. Like I think because we have a lot of friends in common, I think it's kind of like in the past, it's almost felt like, like a divorced couple. Like it's like we can like <laughs> be together and we can like be very mm-hmm. civil with each other and like so that we can like maintain our friendships. And I don't know. I mean, I I hope that does isn't an issue yeah. but like I think we probably will need the space first and then like I hope we'd be able to like see each other yeah so are all your friends being like told ya uh, we saw this coming yeah that was actually really annoying <laughs> I'm used to it. it's uh, nice no no it's like it's a much easier <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, because how long officially have you guys been dating at this point? Four months. It feels like you guys have been dating for, like, years because yeah. you kind yeah. of have. There's so much so- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, again, that's just, like, a testament of, like, why sometimes friendship first. Yeah. Whether mm-hmm. that's eight years of hooking up or just <laughs> meeting someone as a friend and then letting it evolve over time yeah. can yeah. build a strong foundation. Yeah. Love it. (laughs) All right. Shall we wrap this up? Yeah. I mean, I think if anyone has had an experience where they've gotten caught in a friends with benefits that has not turned positive. Yeah, we I've been hear there from before. You. So let's hear from others as well. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm going through my friends list on Facebook right now. <laughs> Taking inventory, guys. Watch out. If you get a like on your Instagram, you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> the universal sign. They're back. <laughs> Don't fight it. Don't fight it. <laughs> okay, we're going to wrap this up again. Julie said we're looking for stories. And if you have a different perspective on this Friends with Benefits story, we want to hear from you. Or any other perspectives. Maybe it's just like a, a strange way of getting together. Yeah. Some, sometimes the universe works in very strange ways. And you cannot fight it. Okay, we love to have you as a guest on our show. So reach out to us at datablepodcast.com. All right. Stay, stay dateable. dateable. Your action item for this week is to think about your current network of friends and acquaintances, people you surround yourself with, and see if there are any friendships that maybe you want to explore a little bit more. Sometimes we could write people off very quickly or put them in the friend zone and never revisit them again. But if they're already in your network of people that you like hanging out with, that's a pretty good foundation for a relationship. So take inventory of the people you surround yourself with and make an effort to explore some of those friendships more in depth. Want to continue the conversation? First, tag us in any post with hashtag stay dateable. Then head on over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching services with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. To connect with us, find Dateable Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're also downloadable on Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable.